Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to my 2023 Mirror Guide for Hades. Uh, so it's been a very long time since I've revisited this. The Mirror Guide was the very first one I ever released on my channel in terms of like a guide or even just like a talk through. Uh, and I think it's been it's been enough time definitely to revisit it at this point. I don't want you to think like a ton of things have changed. And I want to make it clear Hades has not changed at all. Like the game has remained essentially the same since my first guide that's for sure and even since the launch for the most part only the most minor things have really changed in the game so there's no updates or anything like that but in terms of metas and just opinions yeah some things have shifted and so i figured it was time to go through it all right make sure you uh comment on the video if there's any other questions that you have if i don't answer something about the mirror here or even just about the game in general it also helps me know what kind of video you might want to see in the future about specific aspects of Hades but uh let's jump right into it so I'm gonna give you some percentages of how often I'd use one half of the mirror versus the other for each individual level that way it kind of gives you an idea of maybe how often you should be swapping them back and forth I think in the conditions of course I mean it just really depends how you play the game in a lot of ways which weapons you use are you doing super high heat super low heat speedruns etc a lot of that stuff is going to matter but just to give you an idea i guess of how often i use each so first off we got shadow presence versus fiery presence shadow you can deal backstab damage to enemies fiery presence you deal more damage to undamaged enemies so one small thing about fiery presence i want to make clear is that if you break the armor of an enemy and it looks like they have a full red bar after breaking the armor they still count as damage so you don't get like the the bonus again for fiery presence you're probably going to want to use shadow presence the majority of the time and if there's any weapons or aspects where you don't think you'll be doing a lot of backstabbing or if the weapon or aspect isn't really capable of backstabbing you'd swap to fiery presence the best examples i can think of is aspect of beowulf you just don't really get many if any backstabs especially since it's a cast oriented uh aspect the other another one is uh Aris rail you wouldn't really get backstabs for it especially since most of the time you'd be running something like zeus on the attack so you can run fiery presence for those aspects maybe hestia as well aspect of hestia is pretty uh cool for fiery presence but you lose out quite a bit of boss damage when you do fiery presence so shadow presence you're probably going to be using that mm, 70 to 80 percent of the time i think all right next we have chthonic vitality plus three health per room at max or dark regeneration uh plus 60 percent of the darkness you gain as health um I don't think this decision is super important if you like one over the other you can probably just do that to be honest uh I like to use chthonic vitality and then just not think about it honestly uh dark regeneration you will have to think a little bit more about you can get more health out of dark regeneration possibly but you're going to have to take room rewards that offer darkness maybe you might want to uh check out Tros for darkness to get a big heal there but that's sort of a gamble right I kind of like the simplistic nature of Chthonic Vitality personally here just three health per room don't kind of think about it uh especially for someone who does lots of speed runs I like this is definitely what you do over that if you've already gotten all of the boss rewards for the weapon you're going to be using uh like the titan's blood and the diamonds and stuff then you're not going to get that extra heal after defeating the oh sorry you are going to get that extra heal after defeating the boss so i guess that's something to play in mind but then you also see a fountain right afterward as well so i can see why a new player who's farming a lot of darkness might want to use dark regeneration uh so if you feel like that's helping you more then just go ahead and roll with it i'm gonna give this one a 50 50 because you could run either one and i don't think it's a huge difference all right so we got death defiance versus stubborn defiance here i get a lot of questions about stubborn defiance how it works and stuff so you restore 30 percent of your health when you lose the stubborn defiance but you can use it once per chamber and you get it back when you go into the next chamber uh i mean this one's pretty easy you're gonna be using probably death defiance 99 percent of the time i've only found a use for stubborn defiance when i'm using a very high heat pack to punishment when I, where i have 100 percent lasting consequences so unless you're running some kind of pack to punishment with 100 percent lasting consequences which gets rid of your he healing entirely there's not much reason to play stubborn defiance i've heard some new players say that it helps them get further into the biomes when they first started out so if that helps you go ahead but otherwise I'm I still kind of just think 99 percent of the time death defiances all right next we got greater reflex plus one dash versus ruthless reflex 
Uh, you gain 50% damage and a dodge chance for two seconds when you dash just before getting hit. So you will have one dash uh, with Ruthless Reflex unless you get some extra dashes from the aspect of Gilgamesh or you get some extra dashes from Hermes. So no matter what, you're going to be down some dashes uh, most of the time. Uh, straight up, like this. Raider Reflex, 99% of the time. 99.9% .9 of the time, probably. Even with Gilgamesh, Ruthless, Ruthless Reflex might be kind of iffy. It's just not crazy reliable to get going, I'd say. Like, it, you don't really have to think about it, or if you are thinking about it, I don't know if it's really worth it to try to just make sure you keep up that two-second buff as much as possible. And the bottom line for the game is that having only one dash for any portion of the run is just brutal. It's absolutely brutal. You, you can't avoid attacks well. You can't get out of attack animations. It just limits so much of what you do. Greater reflex 99% of the time. Next up, we got Boiling Blood, plus 50% damage to an enemy who has a cast in them, but only from your attack and special. And that does not include things like Doom or Lightning damage, even if you have them on your attack or special. It's only the white physical damage that you deal from your attack or your special versus Abyssal Blood, reduce move speed and damage of foes with a cast in them 6% per rank up to 30%. I never use Abyssal Blood. I've never found a place where I'd want to use it, where it seems better. There are these theoretical places where maybe if you're dealing pure dot damage like Hangover or Zeus or Doom or cast damage somehow, that Boiling Blood doesn't do a lot for you. Um, but I just, even then, it's it's iffy. I never, ever use Abyssal Blood. Other than for, like, a joking run where I try to, you know, uh, make enemies slow down as much as possible or something like that. A boiling Blood, though, 100% of the time. Next up, we have Infernal Soul plus two cast versus, versus a Stygian Soul. Regenerate your cast uh, every three seconds, but you only get to start with one. Uh, this is an interesting one. I would say myself and probably most people, you'd probably want to use Infernal 60 to 75% of the time. I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to just call it 75% of the time. Even when you run a cast build, Infernal Soul is just easier to deal with. If you take Stygian Soul and you're trying to get a cast build going with it, you really just, you have to get that plus one cast from Chaos or I guess the Legendary from Artemis too. It, without one of those, it I think Stygian Soul on its own just never feels good enough. Even with certain casts like Trippy Shot, Trippy Flare, uh, which sit on the ground and thus you regenerating them via Stygian Soul is really strong. But even still, if you only have one cast, it just doesn't feel great, I think. But yeah, if you can get that going, then it, it's good fun. It's sort of a high roll type of build if you're going to do Stygian Soul with a cast build where you're really gambling on getting a super high roll by getting those extra casts, I think. However, Stygian Soul does have another benefit, which is that, so Hermes will normally offer two cast type boons to you if you have Infernal Soul on. Uh, that's gonna be Flurry Cast and Quick Reload. Uh, whereas if you use Stygian Soul, there's only one cast type boon you can get offered from Hermes, which is Auto Reload, which is probably a good thing most of the time if you're really looking to min-max uh, your boons from Hermes because you can narrow down how many different boons Hermes is going to be offering you Thus have higher chances of getting things like greater reflex for plus dashes hyper sprint rush delivery Because a lot of these cast boons, especially if you're not doing a cast build uh, A lot of those cast boons from Hermes are just totally useless. You know what I mean? So if you're not running a cast build leaving Stygian soul on might be the best way to go honestly I know I said 75% of the time you use Infernal Soul, but I guess if you want to min-max it, it might be closer to 50-50. All right, so we pretty much have an all-red mirror so far, and I don't think that's going to change here with Deep Pockets. So especially once you reach the end game, Deep Pockets, you just start the run with 100 obols. Pretty simple, right? Uh, Golden Touch, you gain 15% of your current obol count at the end of each region, as they call it biome, zone, whatever you want to call it. Golden Touch really only has a very specific nuance, I think, which is if you're trying to earn a ton of gold and in order to afford the meta currency in the last shop in sticks, like the Titan's Blood, for instance, that's what, a thousand gold, 1200 gold, I think. Um, that's really the only instance where I can feel like Golden Touch is very 
useful to earn a ton of money that way. I don't know if that's a great way to farm that resource personally, but if you just have fun doing it, then go for it. But for the most part, just gaining more power by having more money early on, thus clearing rooms more easily and being able to take more risks throughout the run, I think is personally better. Uh, I, I use deep pockets 100% of the time, but if you're new to the game and you want to try things out, I can see trying out Golden Touch and see if you kind of like, you know, that aspect of farming up the obols in order to afford that item in the last shop of sticks. So maybe like 90% of the time. But I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. All right, next, uh, we still have an all red mirror right now. I'm putting the ones that I use the majority of the time. Thick skin versus high confidence. So for me, I probably split it like 60% thick skin, 40% high confidence. It depends how high of a heat I'm playing mostly and whether it's a speed run. I think as a casual player, you should probably just run thick skin 100% of the time until you get like crazy comfortable. Like it feels like you can't lose if you're running less than 20 heat, which I know that if y'all put in enough time, you can definitely get to that point in this game. Um, but high confidence, I mean, you got to think about it. You only get the damage bonus if you're above 80% health, right? Uh, it's 25% damage bonus and it is all damage, which feels nice, but it's just, it's not that crazy, you know, like you're not going to feel a huge difference. I think even when you have the buff up, it's not going to make the game, you know, super easy. If you keep your health up, honestly, thick skin is just safe. It's easy. Probably just stick to it, honestly. All right, now here's a fun one. So we have privileged status versus family favorite. So privileged status, you can deal 40% more damage to enemies that have at least two curses on them. Curses are things like Doom, Hangover, uh, Frost. Is it called Frost? I think it's called Frost from Demeter, uh, weak from Aphrodite. So you need two on enemies at all time versus family favorites. Uh, where you simply get 5% damage per each different Olympian that you have. So you should know that the majority of the time, you will only see five Olympians in a run. Uh, and it will take a while to get there also. Once you see four different Olympian gods in a run, the game will not offer you any new gods. It will count Hermes though. So you'll get four different Olympian gods like say Zeus, Poseidon, Aphrodite, Artemis, and then you will only see boons from those gods going forward after that still, but you can get Hermes, so you can get five, five times five, 25% passive damage bonus by the time you get to the end, versus having a potential of 40% up, uh, potentially even earlier than you would have all the gods uh, here. So it's kind of interesting. This is a great choice. I think privilege status is probably a bit more fun to play with in a way because it does make you think about how to make out your build. Privilege status, it suits the gods that uh, more easily get a curse, uh, like Aphrodite, like Ares, like Demeter, like, um, like Dionysus. Uh, it suits better if you think you're going to be aiming for those gods versus having to uh, try to get more than one boon from specific gods uh, to get it. So in other words, Zeus, there's no curse right away when you pick up a Zeus boon. You have to pick up a second boon from Zeus that will apply the jolted effect, and it's a specific boon. You have to get it that way. And there's no other way around it, so it might take a while to get there. So let's say you're doing, you know, a rail run, and you're starting with the Zeus keepsake for Zeus's attack, because you know that's really strong, then it might be kind of tough to get privilege status going anytime soon. So it, while it, I think it could still be fun to keep it on and just try to get that going, and that way you have to think about which gods you take, which boons you take, where you put the boons, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think that keeps it interesting, but if you just want to uh, have a strong build that works naturally, family favorites probably suits that better. But I really like privilege status as a mirror upgrade. I think it's the most interesting one that you probably have on here. So how much do I use one versus the other? I probably use family favorites 70% of the time because the gods that don't apply status effects, Zeus, Poseidon, Artemis, naturally, tend to be the ones that we want in speedruns and high heat. So that's why I tend to run family favorites. But, you know, as a casual player, like privilege status, is uh, it's definitely easy to take. All right, next up we have Olympian favor. Raise your chance for a boon to be rare, plus 1% per rank versus Dark Foresight, raise your chance for gold laurel rewards, uh, including, what's that supposed to be? Uh, a boon, a hammer, obols, palms, by 2% per rank. So in other words, when you're exiting 
a room in Hades, it'll show you either a blue laurel door exit or a gold laurel. Gold laurels can offer those things, obols, palms, hammers, boons. Blue laurels can only offer you darkness, keys, gems, uh, and something else I'm probably forgetting there, nectar. And th that cannot be changed, uh, you know. So having a 20% higher chance of getting the gold laurel rooms Assuming you have maxed out pretty much everything in the game is crazy good. I use Dark Foresight 100% of the time. But if you have not maxed out everything in the game, you're still looking for darkness and keys and gems for all that sort of stuff. Uh, and you kind of want to get that a little bit faster. It's not crazy to tank limping in favor, I think. But it, it just kind of depends what your goal is. If you're willing to take it slow and you're not necessarily rushing to get a lot of wins, then you could do a limping in favor just willing to accept darkness and keys uh, from the room rewards. Whereas if you just want to try to get a lot of wins, you definitely do Dark Foresight 100%. All right, God's Pride versus God's Legacy. This is a good one. So this is one that is, it's probably 50-50 for me right away. I'm going to say it's 50-50. So you can increase uh, the chance of seeing epic boons by up to 20% versus 10% chance of getting a legendary or a duo boon, if possible, as it says. Uh, it really depends for me if I have a specific goal in mind for the run. What is that goal? Am I gonna, am I, you know, am I trying to get a couple specific duo boons for a YouTube video? Then you definitely do God's Legacy. Uh, if I'm using certain aspects that just benefit a lot more from specific duos, like, a, you know, like the aspect of Beowulf, uh, I'm going for a cast build then, and Beowulf benefits a lot from Mirage Shot, the duo boon. So I definitely run God's Legacy for that. I think, yeah, it still should be like 50 50 for most people. Uh, I'd say, I think rarity on boons is not as big of a deal as we make it out to be. It can be, you know, it's not a small deal, but especially if you're playing like 10 heat or less or something like that. Having a common boon versus an epic boon, it's not, it shouldn't make or break a run, honestly. So, yeah, you could swap between depending what your goal is for the run. So, yeah, 50 50 sounds right. All right, lastly, we have Faded Authority. All right, lastly, we have Faded Authority. Randomly alter the reward for the next chamber. One reroll total chances per rank. I don't even know what else you'd call that. One dice? One die? I don't know. Versus Faded Persuasion, Randomly Altar Boon, or Well of Charon choices, including uh, the Cell Wells if you have to. I use Faded Persuasion 100% of the time. I would only use Faded Authority for some kind of wonky meme run where I'm trying to max out very specific rewards like maximum obols, maximum health, or maximum levels on one specific boon. Those are the only times I do Faded Authority. It's never a good choice if you're just trying to win a run, I think. The bottom line is that I think Faded Persuasion just helps you make better use of the boons that you do pick up, and that way you can make the right decisions. Now, you got to be careful Faded Persuasion. You almost almost never, ever want to roll a boon more than once during the same window because the cost just gets too high after the first one. You just got to hope that you get that god again, and uh, that way you get more chances at whatever you're looking for. Um, it also just means that the first chamber is going to be a lot more kind to you, most likely. So, especially if you're going to run a cast build, uh, you want that chamber one to be a cast, probably, or a hammer, I guess. But you really want to get a cast boon in chamber one, probably. And, you know, that's still, uh, you're kind of rolling the dice, especially if you have Fate Authority on, you just might not get that, you know what I mean? You might put on Aphrodite's Keepsake to try to get Crush Shot, but then if you have Fate Authority on and you don't get Crush Shot offered in room one... Who knows when you're going to get it? You know what I mean? So Faded Persuasion just helps a lot like th with that. I can't think of other good reasons. If you do take Faded Authority, you really don't want to waste those rolls on the blue laureled rooms as we discussed earlier. It's just not worth it, I think. Yeah, I, I still think everyone should probably just run Faded Persuasion 100% of the time. All right, and that's my mirror guy. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What do you disagree on? What do you agree on? Uh, if you want to know anything else about Hades, make sure you let me know in the comments down below as well. All right. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next video.